Hey there, I'm Kelmy, and welcome everyone to the third episode of my London recreation in Transport Fever 2. Today's topic will be the city of London. We will have a brief look at the history and interesting facts about the city of London, all the different train services that run into and out of the city of London, and the key major landmarks that are located in the city of London. The city of London is not the same as what most people know as London, as it's an independent city right in the middle of central London. Both cities have different mayors, uh, different police forces and, and different laws apply in each city. If you are interested in the history of the city of London and how it came to be that there are two different cities within one bigger metropolitan area, I strongly recommend checking out GCP Gray's video on that topic, where he summarizes this way better than I ever could. So let's have a look at the map of the city of London. The city of London sits right at the center of the London metropolitan area and north of the Thames. It has six railway stations, the first being Liverpool Street, Cannon Street, Blackfriars, City Thames Link, Fenchurch Street and Moorgate. All the stations serve different parts of the London metropolitan area and some intercity services reaching far out in the country. I will show you all destinations reachable by train from the city of London in a bit. But next we will have a look at the tube. The first line is the central line going from Liverpool Street via Bank St. Paul's and exiting the city at Chancery Lane. Next, the Circle Line makes almost a complete circle within the City of London, entering the city at Barbican, going via Moorgate, Liverpool Street, Allgate, Tower Hill, Monument, London Cannon Street, Mansion House and, and exiting again with Blackfriars Station. The District Line joins the Circle Line at Allgate and following its path to the southwest. The Metropolitan Line is terminating at Allgate and follows the path of the Circle Line northwestwards. The Hammersmith and City Line again joins at Allgate and follows the Circle and Metropolitan Line northwestwards. The next line is the Waterloo and City Line, only terminating at Bank and Waterloo. The Northern Line also crosses the City of London from north to south, entering at Moorgate and going via Bank towards London Bridge Station. And finally, the City of London is also served by the DLR via Bank Station and Tower Gateway. Next, let's have a look at the major landmarks that are located within the city of London. First, there is St. Paul's Cathedral. And then we have the area around Bank Station, with the Bank of England and the Guildhall. Then we have the Financial District, where all the fancy skyscrapers are located, which you know from the pictures. Then there is the Monument of the Great Fire of London and the Barbican Estate. Just outside the city borders you can find the Tower of London in the southeast. But let's get back to our favorite topic, the trains. Zooming out a little bit so we can see all the train services that go out of the city of London. Starting with the first and major station, Liverpool Street. This station is mainly operated by Greater Anglia, uh, but also served by overground trains as well as TFR Rail. Greater Anglia offers intercity services on the Great Eastern Main Line, going all the way up to Ipswich and Norwich, with sidelines going to Southend on Sea, Braintree, and Clarkton on Sea. It also offers commuter rail services going all the way up to Cambridge uh, with Stansted Airport in the middle as well as Hertford. The overground serves the northeastern part of Greater London, also terminating at Liverpool Street. And TfL Rail follows the path of the Great Eastern Main Line until Shenfield. 
the main rolling stock going into Liverpool Street as the class 315, the class 345, the class 321, and the class 720, and as well as the class 725. And the services to Cambridge are occasionally also provided by a 379 Electrostar. The overground is using class 310s, which replaced the older 315 units that were running on this line. The next services that serve the City of London via Blackfriars and City Thameslinks are the Thameslink services, which in the north go all the way up to Cambridge and Bedford via Stevenage and Luton, and in the south make their way to Brighton and Seven Oaks, as well as making a loop turn in the southwestern part of London. These services are all provided by class 700s. I also included um, the Great Northern services, which um, depart from Moorgate into the Thameslink network. These Northern services are run by class 717s. The South Eastern Railway departs from Cannon Street, serving the southeastern part of the London metropolitan area with peak services going all the way to Hastings and Orr and to Wembsgate. These services are mainly provided by the class 465 networker as well as the class 375 electrostar. As the final terminal in the city of London we have Fenchon Street which is served by C2C services on the MEM, which serve the area on the northern side of the Thames. The rolling stock on this line are mainly 357s, but C2C also owns six class 387s. I have some time lapse videos on how I made this part of the city. However, it is mainly just laying down the world network, switching between Google Maps and the game to approximate the road network as good as possible, and then filling up the spots with house assets. There is no fancy building technique used, and therefore I think it's good to just show you some bits of it. I was starting this project with the City of London mainly because I wanted to recreate the feeling that you are actually somewhere in London on this map and uh, one major part of being in London is having the skyline visible from almost every um, place in, in the city. So I started doing the skyscrapers over the last week and you might have noticed on the workshop that I accidentally, actually accidentally, I didn't plan to but I spammed the workshop with lots of high-rise buildings. In retrospect I think it would have been better to put them all into one City of London skyscraper pack but yeah, um, I didn't expect to make progress that fast with the skyscrapers, however I felt like as soon as I figured out the basic shape and understood what the architect was uh, trying to build there, uh, I just had to recreate the shape. And texturing is um, these things are pretty, um, is pretty easy because the window textures um, are basically just the grid um, and some some reflective parts, some mainly dark blue but also grey reflective parts and the game engine makes most of the work with adding, adding the reflection and the glossiness to the textures which uh, yeah, which enabled me to make to good progress and have good looking results in that time. Later uh, in the week I decided that that it would be appropriate to make the next episode about the city of London. So I started filling up the blank spaces that were left between the skyscrapers with houses. 
These are all not my houses, these are houses I found on the workshop. And they are quite good, I like them. They, uh, you can add a lot of variety by putting them all together. Um, and yeah, um, later on you can see for yourself in the cinematics and tell me uh, if you like the result or not. During the process I realized that I uh, can't keep up making all the uh, major landmarks for the city of London and put them in one episode within a week. So I decided to start a new series of mods after um, my skyscrapers, which just is um, which just is the basic shape of the landmark with a faithful gray scale. Uh, so I can just put them on the map as placeholders. Uh, so you guys can orientate in my city cinematics and see where the landmarks are supposed to be. I quite like the style of having these sketch models on the map. And yeah, um, I think I, I, I'm planning to make actual models for this, but this all will take some time. I can't, I'm, I'm not that fast with models like the tower or uh, St. Paul's Cathedral will be a lot of work. So, um, also a lot of texturing work, which requires most of the time. So I left them there. Um, so far I have the St. Paul's Cathedral, I have the Tower of London, I made the Tower Bridge, and the Barbican Estate, which is the large complex in the north uh, of the city of London. Uh, in doing this, um, I, I looked up the history of the Barbican Estate and what's located there, and it's quite interesting. So the city of London has a very small population. Only five to seven thousand people live in the city of London, compared to the uh, people that are employed in the city of London. So, so there, uh, uh, I think the official number are 500,000 people are employed in the city of London, but unofficial estimates uh, say it all goes up to 1 million people being employed there in the city of London. And that compared to a very small population um, that is between 5 and 7,000 people makes the city of London truly in unique space in the UK and most of the people that live in the city of London actually live in the Barbican complex. So the Barbican uh, estate was built on an area that was heavily destroyed within the Second World War and planned in the 50s and I think finished in the late 70s beginning of the 80s and was planned for uh, for, for retiring managers, I think I saw an ad on, on Wikipedia saying that um, the audience group was really the wealthy people who make their career in the city of London and want to live near the city of London. It is also a um, the major example for um, the brutalist architecture sky st um, style which was popular uh, in the post-war area in the UK which feature a lot of um, very straight structures and exposed building materials which uh, are these um, commonly known um, these, these uh, concrete blocks you know uh, that ex um, they exist in almost every European city um, but yeah the, the Barbican um, complex also has some some cultural uh, part. So the London Symphonic Orchestra is located within the Barbican complex. They have a grand hall there where they play. And really um, it also um, is interesting because it tries to separate the life and the pedestrians uh, from the streets and the traffic. So the low level um, streets are hidden in, in tunnels while pedestrians are supposed to be in the first floors. Which is interesting um, 
because there was um, there were plans for the city of London in um, I think in the 70s and 80s uh, not sure about this but um, to build a pet walk system a pedestrian walk system all over the city of London where um, the where the pedestrians are su were supposed to walk on on bridges or one or two level above the ground floor so that um, they don't interfere with the rest of the traffic that was by the time where uh, all the major highways were built uh, within the UK and the vision was to make a car friendly city so everyone can travel by car easily and um, pedestrians were a problem in that so they tried to solve it by uh, building elevated walkways um, but this scheme was um, abandoned uh, so so you can see when you walk through the city of London you can see attempts where they started to build it but due to the lack of a clear plan uh, most of these walkways end suddenly and you need to climb down the stairs to ground level again so next time you're in the city uh, keep an eye out of the um, out of uh, the remainder of this pet walk I also will link you a video which uh, I got my information from and uh, which uh, has nice video footage of it and explains it in better and uh, better detail than I could uh, I put it in the video description as well but back to the city of London and my landmark uh, sketches I'm also planning to fill the rest of the city of London uh, mainly the area around bank station with buildings and I made a sketch of the tower bridge uh, which is actually not within the city borders but operated by the city of London and I also did the tower because it is really close it's not part of the city of London but uh, I put it in there anyway and I will probably about all these landmarks will do extra episodes where I explain the history in more detail and hopefully have them in a more detailed shape. Speaking of detailing, I wasn't really sure how I will do this section because I'm obviously going to detail uh, all the terminals and everywhere where the trains go, but I don't think I be able to greatly detail all the streets and all the little backyards and everything because um, that will definitely kill the performance of the game so for now I just placed down the houses to make to create the feel of um, it being a big city I also really tried by play and um, placing down the houses to to mix every style up as it is in in the real city of london they uh, shamelessly put all different building styles all together and it is a big mess of buildings and very small streets so um yeah uh, that's what i'm trying to recreate with my house placing here as well i'm not actually placing all the houses in the shape that uh, that they um, have in the original i just try to recreate the feel of the city i also put down some red london buses they're not following any real bus lines but uh, i think that should do for now so so we have at least a little bit of traffic for traffic i'm also using a magnet mod so you can place down uh, streets that spawn cars uh, because um, I think the all these houses are actually destinations for uh, for the Sims but they don't spawn cars which is a uh, limitation of the game and um, that imposes the game to us modders but um, I put down at least a few magnets I'm also um, I've been told that 
cars and traffic jumps will affect the performance of the game a lot so I try to use them carefully to make the streets look more alive but I'm not planning to recreate London's messy traffic and the big traffic jams because that's in my opinion an unnecessary detail that will unnecessarily kill the performance and forces me to stop the series way earlier than I hoped to. My secret tip for the city of London actually is to visit the Sky Garden located in the walkie talkie that is the build, weirdly shaped building that looks a bit like a walkie talkie uh, that is the big skyscraper that is a bit uh, to the south of the group of other skyscrapers near the Thames and um, the sky garden is a really good point to get a nice view of London from above so um, the top floor um, they built in the top two floors actually they built in a nice garden they have a bar up there and viewing platforms and it's completely free to go up there you just need to register in advance i think um, registrations are open uh, two weeks in advance and keep an eye um, if you're visiting london next time keep an eye out and definitely book one of these free uh, tickets to go up the sky garden other places like the shard or the london eye which offer a similar view but you need to pay for it and they are actually not that cheap so uh, yeah that is a good way of saving money during your london trip so in um, the beginning of the video i made some nice informatic um, infographics about all the terminals I think every one of the terminals will get an extra episode as well, probably as soon as I get to it to make the actual stations, which will require some time. I think for King's Cross, uh, uh, it, it took me, I started this project in November 2020 and released it sometime in January, January I think. So, but, but that, um, so that took me a lot of time, but that was my first station. I learned a lot since then, and I'm hopefully be much faster with the other London Termini. Otherwise, I uh, can't keep up the pace with <laughs> producing weekly videos of um, my London bill. Another recommendation I have to give is um, the new mods. The new houses by Ice Master, which are which were released on the Steam Workshop this week, uh, they are really amazing. They have a nice snapping feature, so you can build nice rows of your houses, and they are a bit hidden in the pack, mm -hmm. which uh, features the Berlin Metro. But uh, they actually have some nice houses in there, which I really recommend installing and putting on the map. That were something that was missing for the city build of London. I think um, we are good equipped to do the outer parts with the very uh, British suburbs with all the terraced houses. And I'm also planning to do more houses in the upcoming weeks as well but um, for the uh, inner city uh, we were missing a lot of houses a lot of British style houses and they get quite close so I really recommend them uh, try them out I also have something new um, which I want to show you before the cinematics I made a progress um, recording of um, a top-down progress recording uh, which records my progress at several steps hopefully you like uh, that one as well but speaking of the end I think it's time to not bore you any longer with my house placing which is really just the same I uh, try to fill up the holes in, in between the streets with houses and try to make them uh, 
try to use all different kinds of houses so it looks more realistic and uh, yeah uh, thank you for watching this video so far i hope you enjoyed it i enjoyed making it and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and channel to stay up to date with my london builds uh, leave it a like leave it a comment tell me what you liked and uh, see you next week